Hi people, what about improving your Lightroom editing skills and get from this image to that image or from this image to that image? Learn how to create stunning images using only the basic settings of Adobe Lightroom. Hi people, on request I've decided to create videos about image editing in Lightroom and in this first video I'm going to guide you step by step through the basic settings of Adobe Lightroom that will already create a big difference in your images. I'm going to guide you through the possible adjustments in the develop module of Adobe Lightroom CC Classic 2019. For those of you with experience in Lightroom already, there may be something in it for you too. Did you know, for example, that you can set the black points of your image by shift double clicking on the word blacks? So there's a lot to learn in this video, make sure to watch it all the way through. Most of the settings are the same in other versions of Lightroom, like mobile versions or older versions, but Lightroom Classic CC definitely gives you the best option, so I highly recommend using that. Most of the settings, except for some keyboard shortcuts, are even the same in Adobe Camera Raw that Photoshop uses to convert RAW files. So if you want, you can follow us in Photoshop too. Okay, enough talk, let's start the fun. We are in Adobe Lightroom Develop module and we'll start with a basic tab. Right on top you can choose whether you want your image in color or black and white. You can press the buttons here or click the keyboard shortcut V. I often get asked whether it is better to take black and white images in camera or convert them later in Lightroom and my take is definitely Lightroom. Not only do you get the chance to also use the color image like in this case, I really like both color and black and white, you also have so much more control when you convert the black and white image later in Lightroom, like in this example. This image looks good in color, but if I convert it to black and white in camera, I will get hardly any separation in the brighter colors. If I rather choose to do that in Lightroom, I can create something like that, because I have control how every color is converted to black and white. If that was helpful for you, it would be wise to hit that subscribe button right now. I'll wait a few seconds for you. Ready? Let's continue. A short side note on sample images. In this basic course, I don't want you to work on the same images I do. I want you to understand the Lightroom settings rather than mimic what I do. I'll show you what you can do with each of the sliders and then it's on you to try it on your own pictures. Go along with me while I discuss all the available settings. Later in the course, I will give you samples to work with, but for the moment, use your own. Next item is Profile. You can choose one in the drop down list, these are your favorites, but the real fun starts once you click on this button. You will see all the available profiles, and there are lots of profiles available, and if you hover over one of them, you will get a preview on the real image. What you will also see when you hover over them is a star in the top right corner. Click it to add it to your favorites, and click it again to remove it from the list of favorites. The favorites will show up on top and if you close it, you will have them in the drop down list. Let's click that button again and if you select one of the profile, let's say this one, you can select whether you want it to be applied 100% or if you want to blend it smoothly over the original. Profiles will give you a different look immediately. So if you're used to, for example, Instagram filters, you may like that. But you probably won't pay the monthly subscription for Lightroom to use filters. So you want more control over your image and that's what we're going to take now. White balance is next. Again, you have a drop down, so you can choose, for example, fluorescent if your image was shot indoors and the main lighting was fluorescent. Or you can choose, for example, Daylight, if you were outdoors in the sun. Lightroom even has an auto setting, but in my experience, the results are rather bad. Many people prefer a custom white balance using a gray card or a white piece of paper. You can then use the eyedropper tool to pick the white balance from the gray card or 
from the white piece of paper. By the way, you can also use the keyboard shortcut W instead of clicking on the eyedropper tool. Talking about keyboard shortcuts, they can speed up your Lightroom workflow quite a bit, especially for functions that are buried deep in the menus, like here, set flag, re sorry, set flag rejected. You could use your keyboard shortcut X instead for rejected, or U for unflagged, or P for picked. I have prepared a PDF of what I think are the most important Lightroom keyboard shortcuts down in the description below. Okay, back to white balance. Instead of using a gray card, you could also use something you know that it's white, like the ceiling in this image. But to be honest, more often than not, I don't like the results of the custom white balance in Lightroom. Christmas tree lights represent candles, so they have to be somewhat yellow. So what I do usually is drag the slider to make it look the way I want. A short tip. Doing that, do look away from the monitor from time to time. Our eyes adapt very well to colors, so while we drag the slider, our eyes already adapt. But if you look away from the slider to reset our eyes and then look back, you may see things differently. Next is the tone group within Lightroom's basic tab, and since most of you are beginners, I show you something that is a bit hidden but very useful the auto button in Lightroom. Give it a try and see where that gets you. It usually is a very good starting point for the rest of your edits. However, I'm so used to my workflow that I hardly ever use it. So let's undo that by pressing Ctrl Command Z. When I say Ctrl or Command Z, Ctrl is for Windows and Command is for Mac. Keep that in mind for the future. The first setting in the tone group is exposure. Drag it to change the overall brightness of your image, similar to what you would do with your settings in your camera. If you want to compare it to a setting in your camera, it would be ISO, because it does increase noise. Now, depending on the camera you took the image with, dragging the slider may create more or less noise. Usually, newer cameras and bigger sensors create less noise. Here is an example. This image was shot with an older camera and a smaller sensor. Let's lift the exposure to plus one. And this image was shot with a new camera and a bigger sensor. Plus one again, like so. So you can see the difference. One of them creates much more noise than the other. So depending on a camera, you can save an image that is underexposed. Like this one, for example, that was more or less underexposed. Let me show you the original, that one. And now hold your breath, this one, that was way overexposed because the last lightning was so much brighter than all the other ones. Let me show you the original, boom. These examples are rather extreme though, so don't expect to recover things like that. Usually it is best to get it right in camera, but there are situations when it is better to over or underexpose, having your final edit in Lightroom in mind. Let me give you two examples. This is the first one. I deliberately overexposed the image because I wanted to blur the background with an aperture of f1.4, while my camera only supports a shutter speed of 1 8000th, so I knew it would be overexposed but I know my camera well enough to know that I can recover the highlights, like this. I could even create a moonshot out of this. But once again, I know our cameras really well. Use your own files to see how far you can go with your cameras and how much latitude they give you in the highlights or in the shadows. On the other hand, I deliberately underexposed this shot you already know, because I wanted to keep as much of the highlights as possible, and I knew I could bring back the shadows in Lightroom. Still doesn't look good? Let me do a few clicks to change that. There you go. By the way, let me show you a shortcut to display over or underexposed areas in your image. It's J on your keyboard. Now. The areas that are completely black will be displayed in blue, and the areas that are completely white will be displayed in red. Let me bring that 
whites up a bit to better show it. You can also use the triangle top right for the whites and this one for the blacks. Before we have a look at the aforementioned highlights, let's have a look at the contrast slider within Lightroom. The contrast slider adds contrast. Surprise, surprise. It brightens the whites and darkens the blacks. Now, some photographers don't like the contrast slider because they say it doesn't give them enough control over contrast. They like to use the tone curve. But the tone curve can do so much more than just adding contrast that we will dedicate a separate movie to it later in the course. In general, I like to use the contrast slider because I don't need that much control over contrast in all of my images. So don't let anyone talk you into using the tone curve all the time. Okay, now we're getting to the more exciting stuff. I'm going to explain the next two sliders together because the highlights and the shadow slider belong together. And with their mother, the exposure slider up on top, they can do wonders to your image. Now you probably ask yourself, why do I need that? The reason behind that is our cameras cannot see the same amount of brightness levels as our eyes can. So what we often see, let me undo that, is that the brighter areas in an image are overexposed, while the darker areas are fine or maybe even underexposed. Make sure you understand what's happening. Now I'll show you a slightly different route. I'll reduce the highlights because they were too bright. Now they are still too bright, so I reduce the exposure a bit. And now you see the shadows are way too dark, so I lift the shadows. That is nothing you can do in camera. So for people that say editing is cheating, let me tell you, basic editing is just adapting the image to the scene you saw on location. Let me just make this pop a little more. With the slider we're going to talk soon. Now you see we went from this image all the way to that image with just four sliders. Now let me do a quick remark. These settings only work as good as that with RAW files. They won't work with JPEG files. To prove that, let me show you how to transfer settings from one file to another. I select the first one and press command Control z Now you see a pop-up window where you can select various settings to copy. I just select a few and then press copy. Next I select the JPEG file and press command Control v Let's compare the edited JPEG file to the edited RAW file. So that's the JPEG you already see up on top, I hope you see that in the YouTube video, that it's already starting to deteriorate. And compare that to the RAW file. It's beautiful, it's saturated, it's soft, just a nice image. Now again, this one. Let me show you what happens if I reduce the exposure even more. You see, the image really is deteriorating up here in the highlights area. The conclusion is shoot raw whenever you think about editing. Now, let me show you some more examples of highlights and shadows because I think these are some of the most important features of image editing in general. You already know this image, but let me repeat the steps because I think it is most important to understand what these do. First of all, I see the shadows are a bit too dark, so I lift my shadows. Then the highlights are too bright, of course, so I reduce the highlights. Now the exposure in general is a little low, so I'll lift my exposure. Now the image looks a little bluish, but it's sunset, so let's lift the color temperature. So, like that. And finally, let's give it a bit of saturation and vibrance. That's the one we're going to discuss soon. But see, we went from here to there with just a few clicks. Let's do another one because I think these sliders are really very important. Let's have a look at this image. Again, the so-called dynamic range, so the number of brightness levels this scene has, was too big for our camera to capture. It has overexposed areas in this area and underexposed in this area. So actually it was well exposed, 
the dynamic range was just too big. Now let's do the magic. We lift the shadows all the way up. We lower the highlights. Now I think it's a little bit too dark. I lift the exposure. And then what I like to do often is lift vibrance and saturation and add a little contrast like that. So we went from here all the way to there again with just very few clicks. Now let's take a break. That was the first part of our Lightroom Basics tab. See you in number two. If this video was helpful for you, please help us rank higher in YouTube searches by subscribing, leaving a comment or simply spreading the word.